I'm Dr. Pete Economo, the East Coast psychologist. And I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin, the West Coast psychologist. And this is When East Meets West. We all have emotions, right? We all know what it feels like when emotions are pleasant and emotions are unpleasant. And we probably all know what it feels like uh, when emotions um, become what we call dysregulated, Pete. So hi, how are you? We're going to talk about emotion regulation today. So helping them come back to a place that feel a little bit more manageable. Because everybody feels. Everybody feels. Everybody feels. So, But sometimes we don't want to feel. <laughs> well, that's, you know. Isn't that the truth? And isn't that, and also, isn't that the problem, right? right? Of what, what happens? So, uh, you know, Pete and I talk a lot about emotion regulation and emotion dysregulation on this podcast. And we really realized it needs its own episode. We got to define it a little bit. So, let's define it. yeah, let's define it. So, uh, you know, let's start with uh, talking about what emotion dysregulation is. So, actually, Pete, I'm going to ask you do you mind telling listeners a little bit about like what that definition is? Like, why we, I don't know. Because, you know, most people it, that are in yeah. therapy don't hear that term, emotion dysregulation. Well, I think let's just like really quick. I know we have done this on previous episodes, but just six basic emotions. So fear, anger, joy, sadness, disgust, and surprise. Anybody who's ever seen the Pixar film Inside Out. The best. Recognizes those emotions and those characters. Uh, and we all experience, those are primary emotions. There are also mm-hmm. secondary emotions, which are a little bit more evolved or involved or, or nu- nuanced or nuanced or complicated yeah, or sure that's the human experience the yeah, American like em- embarrassment as an example right yeah, yeah. um you know shame, shame which is similar um but then we can also say like I don't know there's ones like well interest is sometimes sometimes is it argued arguably a primary emotion but um yeah. I don't know like even like curiosity right like yeah, that's you know exactly so it's just a little bit more nuanced like you said so the regulation of it is that it's sort of like with anger. We all have anger. Even as yeah. a mindful practitioner with a meditation practice, we have anger. Yeah, so, so say what, so what is, what is dysregulated emotion? Like, what does it mean if we feel if You didn't let me finish, Dr. Gruppen. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was ending there? You were, I thought you were going right for a regulation. I was like, I mean. You want dysregulation. Yeah, I want, yeah, I want dis- I want. I want to start with the dysregulation. Dysregulation is punching the wall with the anger. <laughs> or throwing something or, or throwing something yeah because seeing that's red. seeing red you know and and look seeing red might be neurological you know because there's mm-hmm. there's there's based on this anger there are, uh, is research that supports that you know some mm-hmm. trauma response the trauma brain mm-hmm. might just see red mm-hmm. what we're saying here is dysregulation is acting in a way that's unhealthy unproductive based on and allowing and one of the things i often say is my emotion hijacked my behavior Totally. So it's like, yes. And, and I think that's such a, um, such an important start because it's really getting at when our emotions are that intense, it's going to start to have an impact on like what we do and what we think. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, so yes, when someone is dysregulated from an anger standpoint, they're going to engage in behaviors that, uh, you know, I'll use this phrase are going to feel or seem out of control. Right. Mm -hmm. Though I also think it's important to be really clear that because dis- sometimes people don't have any sort of like external behaviors that you might notice, right? That right. dysregulated emotion also really refers to basically emotions becoming um, more intense than um, number one, than the situation calls for, which I can just define in a moment. Please do. And Yes, I will. And also uh, becoming so intense that they impact one's functioning. Yep. Right. Um, and so everybody can feel dysregulated um, at times uh, because, you know, the brain is not a perfect organ, as we we well know. Um, there you go. Can, talking stuff yeah. about the brain again. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, it's our good friend here. It's just, you know, <laughs> I want to just acknowledge its limitations. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, but, you know, sometimes people really struggle um, with with emotion dysregulation. And when emotions are you know, more intense than the situation calls for really what that means is like, okay, so like Pete was just saying, we all have emotions Mm -hmm. and we, you know, we all have anger. We all feel anxiety. We all feel sadness. If you feel anger when, I don't know, let's say someone stole your wallet and -hmm. you felt angry about that. Okay. Like that's a, that's a normal, healthy response, right? Like it's, it's uh, saying, you know, cause, cause anger, you know, we've talked about this before, uh, all emotions, um, are giving us information. That's why they evolved from an evolutionary perspective. So anger tells us that, um, 
we're being threatened in some way or our loved ones being threatened in some way. So Mm -hmm. in a modern world, even like having your wallet stolen, that's like, there's like a threat to your safety, so to speak in some way. So being angry is, is a normal response. Um, Dysregulated anger would be that the, you're start, you start to feel it so intensely, you know, your heart rate is increasing, you're sweating, you're shouting, you're throwing, you know, now we're being more extreme here. Like you're throwing things Mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it sucks if you got your wallet stolen, being mad is, is, is a normal response, but that the intensity of the emotion that I was just describing, um, is larger than the situation. Cause that, right. That emotional response doesn't bring back your wallet. It doesn't bring back your wallet. Right. And as Pete was saying, it starts to have, um, an ineffective impact on, on your behavior. And, and then you can start to, uh, number one, uh, do things that are going to have consequences, for example, like throwing great things or yelling at somebody, but mm-hmm. also the anger is going to remain heightened, which can then, uh, you know, it's not very pleasant number one. Um, but then it can put you at risk to start to feel other uh, trigger other emotions. So, you know, dysregulated emotion is really, like I said, it's experiencing a, an intensity of an emotion larger than what the situation calls for. Mm -hmm. Um, And then again, like I was saying, can it start to have an impact on your behavior? Anything you'd add to that, Pete? Well, I'm wondering how you see it clinically, because I think I, I, uh, I remember like when my office manager first started, she would like, she got a couple of calls or something like, I just want to work on anger management. And she was like, she would call me like in in a frenzy, like, oh, I don't think this is the right person for us. Anger management. That's, you know, it's like they see Mm. the movie anger management or something and think Mm. that the person is going to be like, psychotic or a serial killer. And it's like, no, it's like, that's actually a really insightful person to be able to call and say, Hey, I want to work on my anger. Uh, Totally. Totally. Well, I think it's, you know, in terms of clinically, it's like, look, I would say everybody that's coming to see me is struggling with emotion dysregulation in some way. Right. Cause it, cause again, it just basically means that the emotion is, is, is bigger than what is manageable. And, And there are different reasons for that. Like, I think maybe it's important to acknowledge that some people are hardwired to uh, be more likely to experience emotion dysregulation. So somebody with, you know, like a biological um, mood disorder, like mm-hmm. a major depressive disorder, right? They're more it's just, again, they're wiring or somebody with an anxiety disorder. It's just like their brain. I always tell people, I'm like, everyone's brain's wired a little bit some way, you right. know, like some people, you know, are wired to, to actually not connect with emotion that much, or they're, they're wired towards like being very logic oriented. Right. People that are very, um, like empathically wired, right? Um, they tend to be more like, sometimes you'll see people like highly sensitive person is sort of like a, a term that's out there that really refers to somebody's brain that's just more likely to experience emotion more intensely. And mm-hmm. it's, again, it's not a bad thing. This isn't a no. judgment. There's, there are adaptive parts to it. Um, but yeah, yes. e- everybody, everybody that I see is struggling with emotion dysregulation in some way. And that's where they're, they're coming to see us, right? Is like, so they can learn to regulate. Yeah. And so maybe we'll talk about ways to regulate. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, 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 so uh, I'm going to toss that over to you, Pete. So um, what are some of the strategies that help, uh, help folks regulate emotion? And again, I want to be really clear. Regulate doesn't mean, this is so important because people always miss the term. It doesn't mean get rid of the emotion or not have emotion, right? Which is what most people want. They'll come in going like, my goal for therapy is to not be anxious anymore. I'm like, Oh, we gotta, we gotta adapt that. You're still going to be anxious, <laughs> we right? Are the but, same person. Yeah. <laughs> we are. I'm like, but, but we can work on regulating your anxiety. So it's not, yeah. it's not, it's not impacting your life in, in such a difficult way. I know. Cause people come in, they'll be like, uh, I have anxiety. Like, you know, they'll, why are they coming? Yeah. I, I'm coming cause I have anxiety. I'm like, good. Yeah. And they're like, they look at me, they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, because it means you're alive. Yeah, that's right. That's you right. Know, it's, it's a basic thing to have. So how do you do this? I mean, as we have said here, all roads lead to mindfulness. <laughs> Knew that's where you were going to go. <laughs> um, I yeah. mean, you Look. know, it's because the the mindfulness practices will help to change and strengthen our amygdala, you know, and so some of our like response centers within our brain can actually change through a mindfulness practice. So, mm-hmm. you know, thinking before we speak, that's something we can do in mindfulness, but there are other behavioral techniques. So that could be like asking open-ended questions really listening. So active listening with somebody. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any better practice for growth emotionally or psychologically than listening and asking questions while angry, or perhaps even to someone that you dislike. Totally. Yeah. That's, I mean, absolutely. And and I, hold on. Yeah. That's hard. Well, right. And I think (laughs) actually it is, it is very hard. And actually I think that 
you know, Pete, what Pete's really talking about are a little bit, I'm going to say this on purpose. Those are a little bit more advanced yeah, techniques. Totally. Once, once somebody has more skill in regulating emotion, that it's actually very difficult to slow down and listen and ask questions if you're dysregulated, because yeah. again, as we were saying a moment ago, when, when our emotions are that intense, we, we don't a hundred percent lose control of our behavior, but it can be very difficult to control, um, or to right. do the thing that works more effectively. So if we come back to what Pete's saying about mindfulness, so the research is really clear that when you practice mindfulness, so that's both a formal sitting meditation or informally, just coming back to paying attention to and experiencing the moment including the emotion that you're feeling at any given time mm -hmm. that grows neurons in parts of the brain that help us regulate emotions. So it's like growing muscle in your biceps, if you're doing bicep curls, so then you can lift heavier stuff. So, right. you know, if you're in a situation where someone is making you is pissing you off, you got more neurons in the area that help That's you right. regulate anger. It's not going to get so intense that you lose behavioral control. Right. Um, related to that, I think it's important to say, um, you know, there's a, a discussion a lot in, in uh, behavioral therapies where we talk about emotional exposure mm -hmm. and, you know, we've talked about exposure before on this podcast. Uh, you know, mindfulness is like the original exposure because it's really just contacting the moment. Yeah. And we've done that with anxiety disorders for like 50 years, but it's true of literally any emotion. So I yeah. want to say, tell me if I'm, if you know this research, Pete, I think there's research that says something like on average, of course, it's not for every emotion, but it's like on average, if somebody is willing to contact an emotion, like they let themselves feel the emotion in the moment in a mindful way, the emotion tends to like the most intense part or something passes. I think it's in 90 seconds, I think is what I was taught. Yeah, that would sound about right to me. I, I don't know for sure, but absolutely. Like that's, I mean, anyone could practice that, you know, because mm -hmm. it's, you really can't, you know, like we do for panic, you can't stay in a panic state for, for a very long time. Uh, and so I, but I will I'll just weave in some of the Eastern stuff. Yeah, if, please. If, and we we talk a lot when we when we when I when I bring in some of the Buddhist stuff, we talk a lot about translation. Mm -hmm. And that's what's coming to mind to me with this because they will like a lot of Buddhist teachings will call will 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 call or label emotions like attachment or jealousy as poisons. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really critical because, because again, the, the practice is really like that first noble truth is that we all suffer. So then the second is like releasing attachment, eliminate suffering. And so that's the thing I see the most. And when I'm working as, and I think that's why I went to the advance around mm. this idea of emotion regulation, because when I'm working with like high performers, I, I can really go to that of like, what is that? What is that emotion about? You know, mm -hmm. like, or, or when you were dysregulated, and that's okay, non judgmentally. That's okay that you got to that state. Mm -hmm. What was it about? What'd you learn from it? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because what we're trying to do is like diffuse from the attachment of that moment, you know, or the judgment that we place mm -hmm. upon it. Uh, because really, the the main teachings are within Buddhism is that emotions are fundamental, and and actually mm -hmm. they're they're seen as a big driver behind basic intelligence and creative energy. I mean, that's, I mean, that's lovely to hear because it's also that just so aligns with, again, from a Western scientific lens, right? That's what we're saying. Like emotions are the, they're absolutely foundational in terms, even in where they are, like, think of like yeah. parts of the brain, it's very deep in the brain, which, you know, the brain evolves over itself, right? right. That it's, we needed them for survival. That, that, that gave us information still does before still does. we had language, before we had language, that's right. right? Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, well, and I, I think, you know, if we can add in just uh, one other piece here um, in terms of the, the, the Eastern part is that there's also, it's important to say um, in mindfulness, there's this concept of cling to nothing, push away nothing, mm -hmm. right? It's like, just be with what is happening in the moment. Yeah. And we know that when we push away emotion, we suppress it, we try not to experience it, or we dive into it, we ruminate on it, we over-focus on it. Both of those behaviors create emotion dysregulation. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people want to like be in their emotions too much, or they want to go like, I don't want to feel it. I'm afraid of what's going to happen. And either of those behaviors are going to cause emotion dysregulation. So, mm -hmm. you know, if listeners can take one thing away from this episode today, it's that if you allow yourself to experience the emotion as it's happening without judging it, just let it be, even if it's really uncomfortable or really comfortable. Sometimes we get attached to things like infatuation or, or joy it's not going to um, balloon out of control. 
it's not going to get so intense that you have trouble um, accessing helpful behaviors. Um, and in fact, it's it's going to be able to just pass like a wave more quickly. So listeners, when you feel emotions today, go ahead and try. Can you, can you ride the wave and be willing to just see what waves are coming and, and, let, and allow those to happen too? This has been When East Meets West. I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin. And I'm Dr. Pete Economo. Be present, be brave. This has been When East Meets West. All material is based on opinion and educational training of Drs. Pete Economo and Nikki Rubin. Content is for informational and educational purposes only.